Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Terry D. And um, I know that it's the middle of the day. Typically, I try to schedule my live videos, but I felt really led to do this. And um, it's very personal in the reason why I'm doing this video. So it's not about relationships. It's not about anything like that. But this is very personal. And so it's about my daughter. Um, I was not going to share this. And I'm going to get through it without being really emotional. But um, as most of you know, thank you. Thank you guys for joining. I really, really implore you to share this because I really need other people to um, see this. I need as many people as possible to see this video because I want to know if you actually are a donor. Um, do you donate blood? Do you give? Do you give back? And the reason I'm asking this is because 93% of white people, if they are in need of um, blood transfusions, my daughter gets regular blood transfusions. Since she was the age of 10, she had a stroke. When she was 10 years old, um, she was only getting 10% oxygen to her brain. And she has sickle cell, and she has the highest form. So she has SS sickle cell. And um, at first, it wasn't as bad, but she spent an inordinate amount of time in the hospital. And so now um, it has gotten worse. It was subsiding for a while, but last year alone, she had um, in excess of 10 plus hospital visits. She started having blackout spells. So what um, the sickle cell started to do was affect her heart. So now she had a heart condition. She could no longer participate in sports or anything. And um, she was just blacking out everywhere. You know, they would call me all the time. Hey, your daughter is blacked out. We went to a fast. I walked away. I came back. The ambulance was taking her away. And so now she is a candidate for a stem cell transplant. And um, that will be taking place at the University of Chicago. And we've already went through the process of prepping her. It is not an easy task. Um, while she was supposed to start school this fall, they kind of um, suggested that she do not start because they want her to get this transplant because she really doesn't have a real quality of life. They're afraid that if she starts school, she'll end up kind of flunking out right away because of all the uh, multiple hospital visits that she have. So I am imploring you, the reason why it's such a hard task right now for her to get this transplant is because it is a very low percentage of African Americans that donate blood. So I am really asking you to share this. I'm asking you to um, to donate blood. Um, it's for the stem cell, and it is not going to specifically go to my daughter, but the more African Americans that we have in the system, the more chances, the higher percentage she has of getting a match. And so... I am not beyond begging people to do it. I've had so many friends to say, hey, you know what? I just want to know how I can donate. So are you donating? Are you giving blood? Again, as I say at the top of this video, 93% of white people have, they automatically get um, donors because they have the highest percentage of people who donate. And race does matter when it comes to this because she almost needs a perfect match and she needs those genes to match up. The reason my son is not a match is because my son and daughter are 10 years apart and they don't have the same father. So it was, it would be called a hap, um, transplant and they've not even they're only doing studies on that right now so it would take an excess of six months for her to actually um even go through the hap study so she'll be in the hospital for six months we've already done all the blood tests she's already in the bank trying to get a match and so we went to a doctor's appointment on wednesday and they just asked us can you please start to ask more african americans to start donating blood to start um doing things her godfather um, his name is Reginald Miller. And um, when she first started getting blood transfusions, for those of you who don't know, um, she actually was getting them every other week for six years straight. And then it got so bad, so she ended up having to get a port in, inserted in her chest because all her veins were collapsed and they could no longer really access her veins. So it was getting more difficult. The port got infected.
And so she had to get that removed. So when she goes to the hospital, a lot of you have seen my post on Facebook about the issues I have at emergency rooms with, you know, them having issues trying to access her um, veins. And so we're trying to avoid these hospitals. I'm trying to get my daughter to be able to have a quality of life. She's 18 and she is a trooper. When I tell you she's a trooper, she's had several um, surgeries. She is not a punk. She is not afraid of pain, but she is tired of this. Um, she's had some, I don't really want to be here any more moments because she's tired of going through this. And so, um, yay for her. She just started her, um, first job two days ago. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and just keep your, you know, prayers out there that she doesn't get sick again. Cause she just got out the hospital a week and a half ago. And so, um, again, as I said, she cannot start school, but you can go to be in order to donate. I'll put other links on here. Um, where you can donate in order to be in the bank just for any child that is um, going through this. You know how many African Americans are waiting to get a stem cell transplant and the reason they can't is because other people of other races are not a match to them. And I ran red today because September is sickle cell. It's, I know it's not September but I'm um, representing blood and all that this, you know, represents sickle cell is a blood disorder. Whereas our, you know, cells kind of flow straight, their cells actually sickle. And so once they sickle and they get stuck, like when my daughter was younger, she probably hardly ever wore shoes because her feet would be so swollen that they would not fit in shoes or your thumbs swell up. So whatever it is. So I'm really, really asking for more of you all. And I'm, that's why I'm asking you to share, you know, to really get the word out. And I'm I'm asking you to at least ask one person today, one person, if they would donate because I really, really, really need um, this to happen. I know what God has for me is for me. What He has for my daughter is for my daughter. But if you if you knew what it was like to go through this, you'd kind of understand. You know the feeling of it. It's it's not good. You know I went through it as a child. As a child, my mom made the decision. My mom and dad made the decision for my dad to stay behind in Chicago, and my mother, and me and my brother and sister moved to California for six years for me to get a specialist for sickle cell. And um, technology and science and all of that has certainly evolved. But I really want my daughter to have a chance at life. People who don't believe in it, that's fine. You know, if you don't believe in it, you don't believe in it. But I'm really asking you to um, donate blood, to get on the registry. And if it's not for my daughter, just know that you have helped to save somebody's life. Um, this is, she'll be in the hospital for four to six weeks. Four of those weeks will be chemo. So it's very intense in what she has to go through. After those four to six weeks that they've prepped her and they've done the stem cell transplant, then she has to come home. She's home for another six months. Um, and she has very limited access to people because her um, immune system will be compromised. And so we don't want people to make her sick. And so it will really will change the trajectory of our lives and, and everything that we'll be going through. So I'm just asking each one of you all to ask at least one person, just one person to donate today. Um, the percentage, it went from what, 5% to 9% for African Americans who are donating. And so I continue to do my research. I've always done my research when it came to my um, daughter's um, health. And she knows like everything about her health. She can advocate for herself. But me as a child, I advocate um, so much for her. So, um, because I have to, because sometimes she just gives up and I don't really want her to do that. She's really, really, really looking forward to getting this. And she's like, I'm okay with losing my hair through the chemo. It's just hair, but my life is my life. And I want her to have a real chance at life, being able to go to college, like other kids, being able to just live life. You know, if it's hot outside, she can't go outside cause it's too hot. If it's it's too cold outside. She can't go outside, you know, so she may have to have on extra clothes, you know, or something that other kids may not have to do, you know, when she had to walk around with this stuff sticking out of her, you know, and having to answer so many questions, you know, from people and people can be cruel, but she don't really care because it's definitely a teachable moment for people. And so all I ask is that, and those of you who are sharing the video, those of you who, um, 
or asking at least one person to actually donate and you yourself to donate. So I've had so many of my friends again to ask me how they could be a part of this. Um, definitely did not want to share. I I just didn't. I'd rather give a testimony um, of how she got over as opposed to the pre thing. But mm, once I went to the doctor and they were like, we really, really really urge you to do this because they thought it was going to be a little quicker for her to get it but she has a different kind of blood so even when she gets a blood transfusion it takes hours for that to go through so i'd prefer her not to have another stroke you know to have a stroke as a 10 year old is not easy to have multiple transfusions to not be able for me to have to say no you can't go to the beach today i just told her that two weeks ago no you cannot go to six flags i let her go against everything i believed in and she ended up in the hospital three days later only because i'm trying to give her some kind of normalcy you know whatever that looks like to her you know while I suffered as a child, I did not go through it as much as she's going through it right now. And so please, 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 um, I will share the link when I'm done. Um, I'm about to end the video. I don't want to take up all your time. I know it's midday, but I will share the video. Um, I will share links um, on here in the comments below where you all can actually donate. It's lit What you can do is you can actually get a kit swab your mouth and mail it right off and then that's how you donate um and then they will contact you um her doctor shared with me how a young lady's life and it was a white um young lady had leukemia and um somebody donated and um saved her life and then her grandfather her whole family became donors two years later they contacted her grandfather and said hey you're a match for someone and he could not contain himself because he said i have to pay it forward and help save somebody's life because somebody saved my granddaughter's life and so we share everything we talk about all kind of stuff but you know i want to be able to make a difference i want to be able i'm sir i can't become a donor because i have sickle cell because of my blood and everything so and um i cannot become a donor if i could i certainly would but i'm certainly asking each one of you to and asking you all to um to be unselfish and share the video and be able to become a donor and to be honest with you i don't care if you're black white blue or purple i just know that african americans certainly need more help when it comes to um, getting that out there so share um, donate blood just because you want to help save a life donate um, for sickle cell donate for leukemia donate for cancer um, sickle cell is a um, after um, I'm sorry I'm very nervous right now is considered an orphan disease so since sickle cell is an orphan disease it does not get as many donors and so it you know you don't have to go and be um, it's not invasive or anything like I said you get the kit you go to be the donor dot be the match I'm sorry dot com you get the kit you swab your mouth and you label everything and you mail it off and and then they will contact you if you are a match. But I just really am looking for a match for my daughter. Um, her name is Maya. Most of you all know her. And I'm just trying to get this transplant done so that she can start school, have a quality of life, and not continue to be, you know, just limited in the things that she can do. Because I am really believe in God for everything that he has for her life. And I know she has a purpose. And I know that he gives us resources. He gives us resources to be able to use. Sometimes we just want to say, I'm praying to God, and I'm just going to sit still. Faith without works is dead. And so if you don't take action, then nothing will happen. So this is me advocating for my daughter, asking for it. each of you to share the video, each of you to ask one person today, more if you want, but at least one person to be a donor, one person to at least look into it. If you don't know enough about it, if you're a little afraid about it, then at least look into it. So thank you all so, so much for joining. Thank you all for sharing those who shared, for listening. I'm sorry for babbling or for my words being a little twisted. Typically, I can go on here and be really poised. But when it comes to this, I kind of break up and, you know, I can't really get it together when it comes to her because I can't, you know, explain to you enough what she goes through. And sometimes people see her and they think she's okay, you know, but you don't know the pain. You know, it's been nights she wake up. 
and I don't know what to do. You know, I've been out of town. You know, well, my daughter did not even want to go to the hospital when she grad when she was um a senior, and she she was in the hospital four times during her senior year. And those teachers worked. I mean, they worked to help her. They were like, we've never seen a kid. They're like, kids come here and break a nail, and they'll be like, I gotta go home. They're like, Maya fights through it, and she said, Ma, just don't make me go to the hospital. I just need to graduate. So she went to prom. She went to graduation. Three days after graduation. She was lethargic. She turned really dark. Her fever was over 104. She didn't know what was going on. I had to take her to the hospital. And um, they were like, her her numbers were so low. They couldn't figure it out. She came home, went right back two days later. And it was all because, and I didn't make her go when she, I knew she needed to, but I didn't make her go because I knew she wanted to graduate. And um, it was, she wanted to do it for my parents and, and be proud of, you know, have them be smiling down on her and be proud. So I did not want to, you know, be the person that kind of rained on her parade. So again, be a donor um, or at least look into it or share it with somebody else who is willing to do it. And if you are already a donor, thank you all so much and have an amazing day. And um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Bye-bye.